everybody, it's Gregory Otero. It is 11.22 East Coast time. It feels like a good moment to start this video. Here in Asheville, North Carolina, yet again. So I want to talk about earthquakes and earth changes related to Comet Elenin and how uh, planetary alignments and comets uh, can amplify these effects drastically. I'm going to go through some math and some previous instances and future instances relating to this comet and also Comet Honda, um, which is another comet that is very close to our vicinity at the moment, closer than Elenin at the moment. So, the first uh, case study to use is off the coast of Chile from February 11th this year. At that point, com Comet Elenin made an alignment with the Earth and the Sun. Now, when you have planetary bodies, comets, let's just call it comet a planet for a second, because to me it's the birthstone of where a planet comes from, is uh, it causes the gravitational fluctuations that objects make, um, the waves they radiate outwards, to amplify. However, depending where those objects are in relation to those alignments, you can get constructive or deconstructive interference um, in relation to the golden ratio. So, with Chile, the Chilean earthquake um, focused on right here off the coast. And so, at that moment, the alignment, the focal, focal point of the alignment was out here in the Pacific, but the moon the moon was over here. So the notion is there's an averaging of these two forces. The thing to realize is the gravitational force of the moon is mostly constant. It changes slightly with the, the monthly cycles, but uh, the difference in effect is where the comet is in relation to the sun and the earth, and also uh, where the earth is in relation to the yearly cycle because um, it's not a perfect circular orbit around the sun, it's also an ellipse. Um, and most orbits are slightly elliptical, if not ex extremely elliptical, such as a comet, which is an extremely elongated elliptical orbit. And so, the thing to understand is we have these two forces on different parts of the planet, there's an averaging of those gravitational forces, which if we said they were even, would be halfway, would be this point in Chile. I don't know the exact difference between the gravitational point forces at that moment to average them, but a bigger point to even think about is the weakest link. And where is the weakest link at that point? Because the weakest link is what's going to be pulled um, during, that, during that event. The thing that happened a year before, on February 27th, in almost the exact same spot, there was an earthquake. So uh, the idea is to figure out where there's the greatest instability of the plate to where if there's a pull, um, on the plate, it could cause an earthquake. Something to take a look at, I can get to think about this concept, is about the tide. And if we have the tide here, we have the high tide and low tide, and the moon is going to pull on the planet in a specific spot. So the moon will pull the high tide uh, or pull the water farther out. The image basically says everything. Um, this also relates to a lot of how the other gravitational forces will affect the planet. So if we look at J uh, Japan, on Japan on that day, Japan, the, the moon was off here in the coast at the point of the earthquake, and the alignment point was down here around Indonesia. Um, so there's an averaging of these two forces. Actually, it was right here um, was, was the alignment point. Um, and because it was near the equinox, it's closer toward the equator. If it was, say, during winter solstice, it'd be um, below the equator, and closer to the summer solstice, it'd be above the equator. And so the other notion would be then, where's the weakest link? There was an earthquake in Japan at that time before it, which caused possibly could have weakened the plate to cause the larger earthquake to happen. There's lots of factors at play. What I'm trying to reveal is that the major factors at play in this are the alignments and the moon. The moon is a major multiplier of the effect, but not the cause. So one thing also to, to put out there is a lot of people say, oh, Japan was caused by HARP. 
Well, I think I've started to pick up on HARP is HARP is a conspiracy theory within a conspiracy theory and that they're trying to take people's attention, this is PSYOPs, away from what's really going on in terms of natural cycles. They don't want us to focus on comet element, or they do in terms of fear. There's really the whole dynamic in terms of really getting to the core of PSYOPs, really to mind fuck us and not know what exactly is going on, to show us the truth and to show us a fake truth so you're fueling both of them so we can't choose. You don't feel the rule of truth. We'll be like, well, that's obviously the truth because they're not telling us about that. They're putting everything on the board to mind fuck us. So let's go to September 6th, which is in a half an hour for me. On September 6th, we have an alignment with Honda. And Honda is extremely close to the planet right now. And at uh, it's 13 hours UTC, um, there's an alignment, and that focal point will just, because we're not at the equinox yet, will just be above this equator. And that point is going to be around Guinea, Sierra Leone, Cape Verde. This point right here will be a focus point of the celestial energy between the Earth, the comet, and the Sun. Now what's interesting though, and this didn't happen with the other two alignments, is the point where the comet is, is exactly the square of the golden ratio. So what you're going to have is pure constructive interference. To understand this concept, I'd recommend looking into Dan Winters and, his, and him talking about constructive interference to understand the golden ratio. What's interesting about Japan is the, the distance uh, the comet was from the sun at that point was 3.141 AUs, astronomical units. Um, 1 AU is the distance from the Earth to the Sun. It happens to be exactly pi. It's just interesting. Um, my focal point is more the golden ratio. So, if we get back to this map, we have the focal point of energy right here around the Cape Verde Islands, but the moon, the moon is right over Indonesia. Okay? So we have these we have these two gravitational points between the Cape Verde Islands and Indonesia. Well, what is interesting is uh, about seven, eight hours ago, there was a 6.6 .6 earthquake in Indonesia. Just like in Japan, there was a moderate size earthquake before the major earthquake, before the alignment. So right now, there is a weak point in Indonesia, which could be the Winkus Link. There's a lot of talk, especially in Zeta talk, um, if you know those guys, that Indonesia will sink. And there's been, there's already been signs that showing that Indonesia is sinking. There's massive amounts of uh, landslides and parts of the coast going underwater and sinkholes. And Indonesia had its first crop circles back in February. It had five of them. And to me, it was a sign guy relating to that the ley line systems in Indonesia are failing. One of the crop circles relate to the energetic structure of a pyramid. And to me, it was almost like Gaia saying, if a pyramid is not placed here, Indonesia will fall. Indonesia will sink. So the alignment time is around 13 UTC, which East Coast time is about uh, 9 in the morning, is when this alignment will take place. And it's, and it's a pure constructive interference, which did not happen with the other two alignments. All right, so the next one is September 26th, the infamous date a lot of people have been talking about. On September 26th, at around between 1600 uh, hours and 1900 hours UTC, is when I feel like there will be a pole shift. The reason why I have a fluctuation in time is there's two in interesting points um, in terms of data. However, at 1900 hours is when there is pure constructive interference between Comet Elenin and the Earth. Because Comet Elenin is the golden ratio difference from the Sun to the Earth, 1.618. Um, at 1600 hours, it is 0 0.618 astronom astronomical units from the Sun. So there's this little window where the alignment's taking place, and it's hard to exactly get the alignment with the data that NASA prov provides. But, so in that little window, there is, a, there is constructive interference, and it's 
the golden ratio, while Honda, it's the square of the golden ratio. And what's interesting is uh, the alignment, the alignment is focused around the Galapagos. It's focused in this area off the coast of the uh, western coast of Ecuador um, is the alignment point, while the moon, the moon is more over the, um, the, the center of the Pacific, south of the Hawaiian Islands. And so you have these two points very close to each other because uh, around, I think it's 7 o'clock in the morning the next day, um, I have it written down. the new moon is at 1,200 hours UTC. There's a new moon on the September 27th. Um, so the moon is almost completely in front of the Earth uh, during this event. So the two are really close to each other. Um, during this constructive interference point. A big difference, though, to think about, as I was saying before, February 11th, the comet was uh, 3.479 AUs from the sun. On March 11th, it was 3.141 AUs from the, uh, from the sun. But on September 26th, it's only around 0.618 AUs from the sun. It's dramatically closer. So the gravitational pull around the Galapagos is going to be much, much greater. And this relates to Alex Retrov in the new documentary he came out of his hour-long lecture of, of how the Pacific Plate is going to fail. And the main notion is that the Pacific Plate is going to be drastically pulled upwards, just like in this picture, right, with the tides. But this is more of a, 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 a effect even on the plates themselves around that point. Um, I really recommend people watching that, that hour-long lecture Alex Retrov did um, about, he, I think it's labeled September 25th as a date in it. I don't know why he talks about September 25th or why it's labeled, but he talks about September 26th. I think it's just a mislabeling of the video. Um, it's, it's a really excellent video. So the thing where I'm showing is how the alignments uh, have gravitational effects on the plants and how the moon is a major multiplier of the effect. However, at different points um, where the alignments take place, you have either constructive or deconstructive interference. Constructive interference drastically increases the gravitational pull. Well, deconstructive interference is what people would call has an anti-gravitic effect, even though anti-gravity is really a bad term for what's actually going on. Um, it's some people could even say nullifying gravity, um, but there'd be a, a, a pushing instead of a pulling. So there it is. We'll see what happens tomorrow with the alignment with Honda and uh, start thinking more about the uh, September 26th alignment and really thinking about what you want to do right here presently. Because you can put your awareness into the future, but then you get trapped into that awareness in the future and you can bring your awareness right here and you can do what Ross is doing and be a ninja <laughs> so uh, being present is key and uh, finding your your center and your grounding is, is one of the most important things we can do as human beings right now otherwise there's my little science lesson on alignments and constructive and deconstructive interference. As I said, if you really want to understand that concept of constructive and deconstructive interference, look up Dan, Dan Winter and his work. Um, and uh, thank you for listening, and namaste.